In Bo is Afraid, following the sudden death of his mother, a mild-mannered but anxiety-ridden man confronts his darkest fears as he embarks on an epic odyssey back home. And it is easily my least favorite of Ari Aster's films so far. Although it is also an incredibly unique experience that I would imagine is exactly the kind of movie that he wanted to make. It's a weird one, and that's an understatement. You are going to have opinions all over the place with this thing. The people that it connects with, it's going to connect with on a deep, very personal level, and they are going to love it. It's going to be a truly love or hate type thing, because everybody else, it's probably going to get an F on CinemaScore. General audience are probably going to hate it, and I can't blame them. I didn't like it. But it also has so many unique elements to it that I really appreciate, and so many elements, mainly in the first half, because it's three hours long, and we'll talk about that, that I was really intrigued by. First of all, Joaquin Phoenix is doing a phenomenal job, of course, but he has so much to portray here in terms of the fear and anxiety that this man is going through. His brain is just the most broken. It's just like the most uncomfortable brain to be living with, where he is constantly in the highest state of anxiety, and then some. And he has to portray all of that. And while I feel like the character in many ways becomes one note because of that, he is doing a good job keeping up that intensity. Everybody else is really good. Nathan Lane, Amy Ryan, a lot of people pop up here and there, but Patti Lapone is also a big standout as his mother. She has some great monologues. I think she was doing a really solid job. And there's just so much unique about the presentation of this film. I mean, you can tell from the trailer alone what they're kind of going for here when you see things like Bo going outside, just out of his apartment to go to the convenience store across the street to get a bottle of water. And there's people on the street who are trying to kill him and there's riots going on and there's all this insane shit happening in the background constantly. And there's this weird graffiti everywhere and these weird signs for things that don't make any sense and actually nothing makes any sense. And it's clear, okay, this is representative of what it's like in his mind. Even the simple act of going outside and going to the store is like a war zone for him because he's so damn anxious. So at the beginning of the movie, we're seeing all that play out, and I was very intrigued by a lot of it because there was a lot of originality. Aster really went all out with portraying whatever the hell he wanted. Let's just put a, a dancing man over there. There'll be a naked man with a knife over there. There'll be a sign that says, death by anal, murder by fuck. I <sighs> Just put all the weird shit on the screen. And so for a while, I was really into that, seeing what it's like being this character and the insane anxiety that he is having to deal with. But I also had a thought near the beginning of the movie. It's just gonna be this for three hours, isn't it? Oh no. And I was right. Oh no. If I had to bring out a comparison, something that I thought of while watching was Synecdoche, New York, where a lot of the things that happen are not exactly literal and represent deeper themes that the director and the writer Charlie Kaufman was going for, but the difference being in Synecdoche, I felt like a lot of the things that happen, on a first viewing you might say, I have no idea what this is talking about, I have no idea what's going on here, but when you look deeper at it and you analyze it, there are a lot of specific interpretations you can come up with for each and everything, and it all builds into what I found to be some very interesting themes about the human condition, about things that affect each and every one of us, and a good insight into who Charlie Kaufman is as a person. I found pretty much every single thing in Bo is Afraid to just be saying, uh, anxiety bad. Also, this guy has major mommy issues, but mainly anxiety bad. And I don't really felt like it ever got any deeper than that. And I never felt like it had those things like in Synecdoche where you can point at one specific thing and say, that is crafted that way to specifically represent this. It's all just like, shit is happening. It's random and it's weird because anxiety. And that's as deep as it ever was for three hours. And on some level, that was probably the point, just to show the weirdest shit possible, to really hammer home just how much chaos there is in this man's brain. But it gets old, man. Three hours? At the beginning of the movie, okay, the things are weird because he has anxiety. Hour and a half later, okay, things are still weird and it's still because he has anxiety. Another hour and a half later, still weird, still the same reason why. I get it. It's listed as a surrealist black comedy horror film. You can cross the word horror off entirely. It's a horror film in that 
it would be horrifying to have this level of anxiety, but I mean, it would be horrifying to have dementia. Is The Father classified as a horror film? I don't think so, although I found that film scarier than this one just because of the way it portrayed dementia. This is not scary. It's not trying to be that. The main thing you need to know is the surrealist part, because that's what it's going for. It is not attempting to portray any level of actual reality. And for some people that might really work, that really prevented me from getting invested. Because again, there is no, as far as I could tell, one-to-one -one correlation for a lot of the things that are happening. Like, this is representing what's going on in Bo's mind right now, but what's actually happening is probably more like this. It goes so batshit, so out there, with all of the random things that are happening, that there's just really no way to know what is even real, if any of it. Is it its own complete reality where technically it's all happening and we're not supposed to think about it that hard? Is none of it happening? Is like half of it happening? And I just don't know. And it starts to feel like, well, literally just anything can happen, so I'm not invested in the stakes. And even if a story has no tangible tether to reality and you're not invested in the stakes, and it all seems to be pointing to the same obvious message that you got just from the trailer, that can still work if the nightmare logic is actually particularly scary or funny. Like the movie Men from last year. A lot of people were mixed on that. I really liked it. It didn't make sense in a straightforward plot kind of way, but it was nightmare logic. The reason it worked for me is because the nightmare was scary. It was effectively tense and creepy, and it was full-on a horror movie. This movie is not scary, and I didn't think it was that funny. There were a couple laughs, for sure, but considering how long it is, the number of laughs I had was overall very few. I found the situations more just generally bizarre than outright funny. Even in the flashbacks that are meant to explain how Bo became the way that he is, those have more tangible, these things actually happened elements to them, but there are still specifics in those flashbacks where I just have no real idea, did that part happen? Did it kind of happen, but not exactly the way it panned out on screen? Did it not happen at all? So even in these flashbacks, you have elements that are pivotal parts of this man's life that shaped him into who he became, and also random nonsense that Ari Aster put there because he felt like it. And you can't always even tell the difference between the two. Bo's character is extremely reactive. Walking Phoenix is great, but... The title is very, very accurate. I liked the title Disappointment Boulevard, but what they changed it to definitely tells you what you're in for. It's kind of just Bo being afraid for three hours. That's mainly the only thing he has going on. He's just kind of reacting. What are you talking about? Why would you say that? What's going on? What's happening? For three hours and characters are defined by their actions. And when I don't even know what's real, I don't know what actions he's taking. So it's hard for me to get invested in him as a person and the actions we're seeing are mainly just reactive and him being scared. For three hours, I keep hammering that home because my god, I can handle an hour of, I don't know what's literally happening here, but it's interesting. I can maybe sorta handle two, but apparently I could not handle three. Because for the first half, I was kind of into it. There were these issues where I wasn't particularly invested in the story because there's just no way to know how much of it is even actually happening. I was not particularly invested in the character, but the performances were so solid. There were so many unique ideas. Aster's direction is great as always. His cinematography, the editing. I can't say I liked the editing because this movie is an hour too long, but the moment to moment editing produced some good humorous moments, some really good effective aesthetically pleasing moments. There were a lot of good shots, a lot of good cuts. There was a lot of really good framing. Just everything that he's done in his other films as well, you expect quality filmmaking here, and he delivers. There's some great sound design. There were things that were getting me through that first half, even though I was also slowly losing investment. But we get to this one scene where this whole alternate storyline plays out, and that's where a lot of the most unique visuals come into play, which I really appreciate when you get this animation and like this storybook sequence and these backgrounds and just really playing around with the visuals of this movie that I, I really respect. But that's also when it completely lost me because it just goes on for I swear 30 fucking minutes 
And then from that point on, I was like, okay, I don't care anymore. How much time is left? Literally an hour. And at that point on, it just started to feel really slow. It started to feel like, where are we going with this? Things are so random that it could just end right now, or there could be another hour, and I have no way to tell the difference, and there was another hour. And in the final minutes, I was just desperate for it to be over. And not only because I had to pee. And it's a shame because the third act actually did start getting more interesting in certain elements. That's when we deal more with the specific mommy issues. More than just, he has anxiety in general. We're going into more detail about exactly what happened between him and his mother. And we understand that a lot of this stuff they're saying really did happen. So that's where a lot of the best character work is. That's where a lot of the, what I would consider to be deepest parts are. But I just so didn't care at that point. You took way too long to get there, I was completely checked out. For a while, I could deal with some of these issues because it was so wacky. Every shot had at least something bizarre in it. There would just be things happening in the background, people doing things back there that just didn't make any sense. And so for a while, it's like, well, I'm curious to keep watching because I just want to see what random stuff Ari Aster comes up with to put on the screen, but that loses its charm over time. So this movie's gonna inspire a ton of discussion, a ton of analysis, and maybe I'll be proven wrong about some of this. Maybe I'll watch it again, maybe someone else will do a, a great analytical piece about how every single teeny tiny thing has a deeper meaning, every single one of which is completely unique, and I'll be like, wow, I can't believe there was so much craft in this that I didn't realize. But I know for me personally, there are some things in that first half that I would like to watch again, just on the chance that maybe I'd see it differently. But as a whole, it's so long and so slow and so repetitive that that completely dissuades me from ever wanting to watch it again, because it just wouldn't be worth it sitting through that entire experience again, just on the off chance that maybe I'll see things in a little bit of a different light, when I really don't think I would. I don't know how to grade this, because it's exactly what Ari Aster wanted it to be, and it's very unique. He didn't do it wrong. He made a movie that might only appeal to literally him and him alone, but I think that's what he wanted. He wanted to put his personal stamp out there, and I'm all for an artist being allowed to just do the thing that they want, and some people are just not gonna like it. Maybe most people won't like it. But also, if I'm gonna give my money and I'm gonna devote three hours of my time, I would like to get something out of it, and I left feeling not much. C minus? I don't feel comfortable saying it's bad. Like, you did a bad job, Ari Aster. I didn't like it, though, so... Yeah, C minus. I mean, I do think there are elements of the script that could have been changed to make it more appealing, like having Bo be a more proactive character, giving him a little bit more depth, having a little bit more of a tangible reality. I just don't think that's what he wanted to do. I think he wanted it to be just an anxiety-ridden nightmare that basically just operates on nightmare logic, but he should have done that for like an hour 45, man. And even though I preferred the stuff in the first half, by the time we get to the end, I'm looking back on a lot of that stuff like, why did we even need any of that to happen? Like with where we end up going, that was just kind of more random shit on the journey. Did we even need it? So uh, maybe I should drop the score lower just because, man, you should have edited this damn fucking thing. I loved Hereditary. I think the first half of that movie is a masterpiece. The second half is really, really good. Midsummer, a lot of people were very mixed. I enjoyed it. Nowhere near as much as Hereditary, but I did like it. This is a major step down. I did not like it. I am going to be far less excited for whatever Ari Aster does next. I'll see it, for sure, but we've been dropping in quality as far as I'm concerned as we've been going. Maybe with this, he got this out of his system, and he'll just never have to do anything like this again. And so the next project can be very different. We'll leave it there. Those are my thoughts. I would love to hear yours. If you agree with me, let me know that I'm not alone. If you disagree, let's have a civil discussion. Don't be like this douchebag. 
let's just appreciate the art. Even though I didn't enjoy it, there is a lot of discussion to be had, and I would actually be interested in hearing in-depth opinions about people who liked it and what they got out of it, because there is a lot interesting here, there is a lot unique. So I would love to hear what you loved about it, and if you can understand why I didn't care for it. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more from me. I have Twitter and Letterboxd in the description if you want to follow me there. Thank you so much for the support, I appreciate it, and I hope to see you for the next one. Death by anal, murder by fuck. I'm gonna put that on my tombstone.